ante mesi tore anta la rasi keri anta na si maya la rabasi socio si asia prati seti to si apanta masi kontina si anta la rabasi socio apanta masi ki anta ne si balanta imasi kaya nama shekere ki teri ne mesi kuna ia sama si ko si oparate ki si kata nama shupata mane si ko bayalane Zia balasi pai se pereti ke si po si aprata ma shikine si antoi na masanta la rabasi korantina mo shusha shantine. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for this new day that you blessed us with. Thank you for the session where we learned about God's love for us. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The reason I fail to understand God's Thank love is because my heart is very sensitive to the things around me, to the people around me, to my emotions. Oh, Spirit of God, as we move into this next session, Thank you for taking complete control of my mind, of my vocal cords. You think through my mind, you speak through my mouth. You know the questions each child of God over here has in their hearts. Thank you that as the word is being spoken, you are revealing to them the mysteries, the hidden secrets as they have come searching and seeking your word. As we leave from here, we want to learn the truths which are practical, easy to apply, so that we can live in the overflow, in the abundance that the Lord has called us for. Thank you, Jesus, that we are no longer the old creature, but now, we are a new creation in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Spirit of God. Any form of distraction in our mind, in our bodies, in our surrounding, we take authority in the name of Jesus, we bind it, and we command it to leave right now. We command the spirit of sleep to depart in Jesus' name. Thank you that each one of us is filled with the spirit of attention 100% because we don't want to miss, Lord, what you want to be planted in our hearts. We make this prayer in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You know what's the meaning of Amen? Huh? Okay. Before that, before we start class, this is going to be an interactive class. I can see all serious faces. What was there in the chat? Something was there. You all forgot to smile. You all are looking at me so serious like. Hallelujah. Okay. I will ask questions, but I will pick who to answer. Which means, what happens? You don't get a choice to sleep in my class. Is that good? Is that good? Good. Hallelujah. Okay. Now, how many of you all like to pray? See, if you do this, no. Heaven is watching, okay? If you do this, also heaven is watching. And if you do this, also heaven is watching. So be honest with yourselves. I'm not judging anybody. Neither is the camera face towards you all. So feel free to express. How many of you all like to pray? You like to pray, but you don't pray. Okay. How many of you all like to pray the way Jesus wants us to pray? Now ask yourselves, do I do that? I was a person who didn't know how to pray much 
But because I had an affliction when I was small and I needed to get healed, so I would have, what do you say, uh, setting, you know, match fixing, correct? So I would always do with God match fixing. You give me this, I'll do this. You give me that, I'll do that. Anybody like me? You give me good marks, I'll put 10 candles. I'll put two garlands. I'll attend so many masses. Nobody like me, only those few people. Today I'll are going evening for mass, no? I'll tell father first take confession. Hallelujah. 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 But I did receive my healing twice and I did get carried away thinking that by lighting candles or by doing some outward performance, God is pleased with me. But the third time when I did the same, it didn't happen. It didn't happen. As a child of 10, 11, 12 years just growing, what do you think would happen to my faith? Would it grow? And I was also told very clearly to my face, your faith is not good enough. So I started asking, who is this faith? Where do you get this person? Because I didn't know whether it's a thing or a something we can see, something we can catch. I didn't know anything. Hallelujah. But one thing I learned as I came into the word of God was how many things happened in my life because of the words I spoke. Let's put Proverbs 6 verse 2. Proverbs 6 verse 2. Brother Brendan, Proverbs 6, verse 2. Thank you. Shall we read it together? Okay. Thou art snared with the words of thy mouth. Thou art taken with the words of thy mouth. Can I get an easier translation, please? Okay. If you have been snared with the words of your lips, if you have been trapped by the speech of your mouths. So when I saw the symptoms come again, all I said was, oh, it's come back. And then the fear started taking over. How does faith come? No. Can you hear her? Then how will I hear you? Come on, louder. By believing. Okay. Yes, brother. How does faith come? You can sit. Okay. Okay, sister. How, by grace. Yes, sister? How does faith come? Yes, you. Okay. Brother, with the red t-shirt. How does faith come? Can you speak a little louder? Praising, okay. Okay. Yes, sister. Okay. Let's go to Romans 10, 17. Make a note of this because this is very key and this is basic and foundational. How does faith come? So now, okay. Um, let me take an example. Friedel. 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 
Is she coming? She's only saying, I'm here, I'm here. But does she identify her name? When she's hearing her name, she's supposed to walk, actually, towards me. Sorry that I didn't know the other names. I didn't know which other person to call. Hallelujah. 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 So just as a person comes, when you call their name, faith comes. So faith is a person. What about fear? Sorry? Fear is non-existing. Then what are you and me fighting for? Hallelujah. Okay, let's figure out faith first, then we'll go to fear, okay? So, faith comes from hearing what is told. Can you put the KJV? It says hearing and hearing. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing hearing by the word of God. There's two hearings. Why? Yes, brother. Why are there two hearings? Because they wanted to increase the words in the Bible. Okay, very good. Something more? Something more, sister? Whatever you understand. There's no right, there's no wrong. We're all learning. Come on. Why are there two hearings? Okay. Sister? Yes? Okay. See, now... Are you all hearing me? <coughs> Correct? So is it from the outside to the inside? Right? But if you go back on the YouTube and you start listening to the same teaching again and again and again and again and you're writing it and you're meditating on it and you're imagining it, now when you face a problem, what's going to happen? You are going to hear from inside out, the Spirit of God speaking to you through the same words. Are you understanding? There is always first from outside in, and as you keep spending time, correct? How does the relation between husband and wife grow? When you are apart? Or when you are together spending time? Before marriage, you don't know, right? Everything looks good. Once you start staying together, you will know more about faith and what Jesus has done the more you study his word, the more you spend time, the more you meditate. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, in the same way, just as faith comes by hearing and hearing, fear also comes by hearing and and hearing. Example, during the COVID season, how many people were listening to the news over and over, checking the statistics, how many people died, how many beds are not there, in which hospital, how many missed the oxygen cylinder and died, how many did not have a burial space, how many were not allowed? I used to get all those data. Then I used to happily ask the person back, are you working for kingdom of God or for the kingdom of the devil? Because words have power. Every WhatsApp message you send, you are responsible for the words you have transmitted to the other people. Do you think about it? Do you see those chain messages which come? If you don't do this, 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 within so and so time, this, this, this will happen. And how many of you are out of fear just forward it? What's the, what's the factor? Fear. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What I don't accept cannot have a hold on me. Example, 
Have you seen birds fly? Correct? Can the bird settle on your head? Huh? No, right? You cannot, the bird will not make a nest on your head, right, sister? Will the bird make a nest? You'll shoo it. But can you stop it from flying over you? In the same way, anybody says words of curse to you or bad words or anything that is not agreeing to the Bible cannot affect you unless you accept it. Are you understanding? Are you understanding how important fellowship and friendship is? I see a lot of you all mingling with one another, taking pictures, exchanging phone numbers. Everything is going on. Ask yourself, is this friendship going to build me? Or is this a time pass that next retreat when I come, let's come together again. Beachside, let's go for all this. Now we know the place. Now we know how to go, where to go. Many of you all are smiling. Maybe I'm speaking what's in your mind. Hallelujah. During lunch break, breakfast break, do you all discuss the notes that were written? Oh, where are you from? Ah, you're from that place? I'm also from there, Mare. So when are you coming for the next retreat, brother? Maybe we can join together and come same time only. What are my friendship fellowships? Building me? Or just breaking me. Choice is yours. In my lifetime, because of my affliction, I did not have friends in school. I had people whom I knew. Everybody knew me. I knew everybody. They would come to me when they had a problem, but I couldn't really call somebody my best friend. Because they would not be there when the going was good for them. So I begin to question the Lord. What is my purpose? In college, the same thing continued. In my workplace, the same thing continued. I did not have people whom I can call friends. But when I accepted Christ, I did not have a challenge where I had the friend coming and asking me, what are you doing Jesus all the time? You don't have any other work. And that's when the Lord showed me my purpose, that I mostly reach out to people who are alone. Because that was a trap I was kept in for years together. I used to like to isolate myself, thinking that I'm not good, nobody likes me, nobody would love me, and many other lies the devil told me. Because words spoken by others were having an impact on me because I allowed it. Let me show you the scripture which will confirm to you, even if somebody says something, you are still the one in control. You don't have to accept what they say. Do you want to see? Or maybe next retreat. Hallelujah. Proverbs 26, 2 please. Okay. Can we read it together? As a bird by wandering, as the swallow by flying, so the curse causeless shall not come. Can I get an easier translation, please? Okay. Don't worry when someone curses you for no reason. Nothing bad will happen. Such words are like birds that fly past and never stop. You cannot stop the bird from flying over you, but you surely can stop the bird from building a nest on your head. How many of you have bird nests on your head? Believing this is wrong with me. This is wrong with me, and you all are roaming with all nests, which you cannot see, but they're there. You know what I mean by nests? 
what you're struggling with, what you're battling with. How many nests? Ask your neighbor, how many nests you have collected over the years? Ask your neighbor, come on. What's your neighbor saying? One, two, three, or still not figured out, still struggling? Uncountable. Praise God. How many nests, sister? How many did he say? He doesn't have a nest. Everything is clear now. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't worry. Is it a command or is it a request? Hmm? Yes, brother. It's a request. Please. Please don't worry. Please don't worry. So we can worry. Just now you said here. Just now you said it's a request. When somebody requests you something, do we have to do it? Ah, it's my choice. So you're saying a request means I can do it. So I can worry. Now if I am worrying, am I according to God's word? Yes, sister. I told you. <laughs> she looked at me like that. <laughs> I told you nobody gets a chance to sleep in my class. Come on, tell me. Or oh, you missed the question. What was the question? Is it a command or a request? Don't worry. Come on. What's a command? Praise God. See, because I don't understand, have you seen a soldier when he goes in the army? Correct? Every country has soldiers. If your captain is calling you, what will you tell your captain? Wait, let me check if I'm feeling good today. Enemy is coming and you're telling your captain, wait. What will happen to you? Will you still be there in the military? But how many times when Jesus is giving us commands, we are saying, wait, Jesus, wait, wait, wait. Today we are not feeling well. We'll just cry a little. Just call the intercession group. Check who's free to pray over me. Check free, check, go and kneel down somewhere and start praying. Right or wrong? But the moment you follow his commands, is the result a guarantee? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, let's go to 1 Peter 5, 7. And let's see over there, okay? Are you understanding till here how important are your words and how each one of us has been given a choice not to accept what the other person is saying? Now, many times people ask me, Sister, this person said this to me. How do I... Say no. Do I say no on the face? Would you say no on the face? Like for example, supposing I walk to you and I said, Sister, are you stupid? What would you say? You smile like that. You don't get angry with me. You'll get angry with me, but outside you'll smile. Outside, praise the Lord, sister. Inside, wait, I'll show her. What will you do? What will you do if I came and I told you, are you stupid? Ah, see? See, he's honest. Outside for us, now we are in a retreat place. Praise the Lord, sister. It's okay, sister. God bless you, sister. But inside, volcano. Okay, now what is happening to my emotions? He's giving me so many instructions, don't move here, don't move there. Now I'm like a tired person, no? Now what's going on in my mind? Hallelujah. Can you see how fast the test came for me? Hallelujah. I'm standing here, brother. Ah, okay. 
ओके नो इट्स फाइन इट्स फाइन दिस इज माई टेस्ट आई एम ऑल्सो ट्राइंग टू पास इट विदाउट थिंकिंग एनीथिंग एल्स हाल लोहिया हाल लोहिया सो इज इट ईजी फॉर आज outside to say one thing but inside to be another and that's why our prayer life is also the same outside we just say what we have to say and sometimes if somebody is there our prayers are longer we kneel down also longer because somebody is watching us agreed no see full agreement like that hallelujah give all your money gold riches joyful moments but what do we want to give him we want to offer him candles and garlands and masses and rosaries and everything and what he is saying give all your and what is we want to keep and then we sit on a rocking chair and then we rock 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 all our christian life and then one fine day we go in the hallelujah so give some some where my finances are concerned if i trust god i'll go bankrupt he says give he's telling give all the time you ask he says give my money will get over in the bank some areas i can't trust god ah to bring the husband back is okay he can fix him do we segregate god in our mind why because we've not yet understood his love you as a mother or a father if your child ask you for something will you give it only half okay let me ask this question it's a trick question so think and ask in the new covenant what do we give to god what's the percentage we give to god let me ask somebody yes brother yes yes okay now when it's my time to give so what's my percentage in the old testament we know it's 1/10 so now in the new testament what's my percentage what did you say 7 months 7 okay okay so what would that be what would 700 be what about you brother what's the percentage don't ask me yes what's the percentage ah i'm not supposed to go out just remind me if i go too far huh? See, listen. In the New Testament, He has already given us everything. We receive it by faith through grace freely. And the Bible says, "Freely you have received, freely you." I am not talking only about money. Many people misinterpret the scripture. There is your time. There is your talent. there is so many abilities you have through which you can reach out to people in the last few days i myself have been learning how i can reach beautiful people who have come here children of god in different ways was the smile good enough did it really help you because i learned that even a smile can make somebody who's in the most gloomy state feel the presence of god feel 
the love of God. You know why? Because I take it very seriously that I am an ambassador of Christ. Every moment I am representing Christ. How many of us come to church? We are good Christians. But the moment you go out of church, what happened? Huh? Devil comes. We always need somebody to blame. If not the devil, then the person. Tell me one thing. When you want to get up and drink water, who makes a decision? You are hungry. You want to eat. Who makes a decision? Ah. You are tired. You want to sleep. Who makes the decision? You are angry. You want to slap somebody, but he happens to be your boss. So now you're well behaved and you make a decision not to slap him. Who made the decision? Good. Now there's a sweeper who has irritated you and because they're a sweeper lower than you, you go and you give them a piece of your mind. Who made the decision? So why are you blaming the devil? That's Christian life. I always want to transfer the blame on somebody else. That's the way we live. Did you see Jesus ever blame the Pharisees, blame the scribes, blame anybody who was troubling him? Or did he just stay focused and go focused and do what he was called to do and finished what he was called to do and then he said, here it is for you. Continue the way I did it. Correct? Why you look confused? Give all your worries to him because, 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 do you believe he cares for you? Okay, let me give you an example of what happens when you carry worries. Okay, all of you, when you'll go back home, in your houses there are dustbins. Good. In the dustbin, you'll throw waste and then you'll discard the dustbin after one month. No? Ah, then? What you're doing pollution for every day? Correct? Why do you feel the need to dispose the dustbin off every day? Ah, it will? It will? Correct. Imagine you went in the morning, disposed the dustbin. Evening you said, oh, I forgot something in the dustbin. Let me bring it back. And you walked into the house. And then will you be able to open it? The same happens with your worries. When you go in prayer, boldly you say, Lord, I cast, I surrender. And you will sing with tears and crying. And oh, the most beautiful deliverance has happened. And by 12 o'clock, somebody said something to you. Now that all that worries come back inside, and now what comes out of your mouth? Stinking words. How do I know if I'm carrying garbage in my mind? Check my words. When somebody comes to them and says, yeah, you know what? Doctor said like this, man. Like this is going to happen. Is there word of God or garbage? And how many of us Christians carry garbage every day? Actually, I want to go somewhere else. But the Holy Spirit is taking me somewhere else. Brother, can you put 2 Corinthians 14, 2? Fourteen two. Two two. Two Corinthians fourteen two. Uh, about the sweet fragrance. Can you check? Or maybe one Corinthians fourteen two.
every Christian, when they open their mouth, you can come to know whether he's really a born-again Christian or just a fake. You know imitation? Imitation jewelry? Girls like, no? Every day we get to wear different, different, no? Matching, matching. Correct? Every day we'll wear the same. Boring, no? But does it have any value? What about the real gold? Nice one, no? Very good, no? See the smile on the face. When I said imitation, there was no smile. But when I said gold, there was a bright smile. So what is on you? Are you an imitation Christian? Or are you a real Christian? Ask your neighbor. Are you an imitation piece or are you a real piece? They're not asking only. What happened? You're also not asking. Yes. For we are unto God a sweet savor of Christ. In them that are saved and in them that perish. Brother, can you give another translation? For we are the sweet fragrance of whom? The garbage we are carrying. Kitle gorom zatare saiba. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have to walk in the sun and go all the way there every day. What is this? Correct? See, listen. Every moment you are a Christian. Once a Christian, always a Christian. But do I remember that? Or am I time to time? Time pass. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. For we are the sweet fragrance of Christ. What happens when we are the sweet fragrance? Which ascends to God. So every time you're representing God, you're speaking words that are building the other person, what happens? You are pleasing to the Father. Right? Hello? Is it right or wrong? When you are in some trouble, okay, and somebody comes and comforts you and gives you the word, what happens to your life? It's filled with the sweet fragrance of Christ. Now, what have you done with the sweet fragrance that you have received? Put it in my pocket. Go home. I'll come back for the next retreat. You'll have come to become disciples, right? Right? How many of y'all have already decided in your heart? Don't put your hands up. It's between you and the Lord. But if you haven't, this is your moment. How many of you have already made it your decision that when I go back, I am going to study the word because the entire playlist will be available. I will make the notes again. I will revise it. I will apply it every day. And now, every day I'm searching for one person to share this sweet fragrance of Christ. Don't put your hands up. Don't put your hands up. It's between you and the Lord. Because remember one thing, you can put your hand up here, but ultimately the fruit will show. Right? What happened to the fig tree? Filled with leaves. Correct? The creator went to the fig tree and said, let me eat because I'm hungry. But what did the fig tree say? Nah, nah. I don't have fruits for you. Sorry. Correct? So did the fig tree challenge the creator? 
because the characteristic of a fig tree is when there are leaves there has to be fruit on that tree so was there fruit so was it faking correct was it trying to bluff the creator what did the creator do chopped it out ah and did jesus use very harsh words or did he simply say no one shall eat of your tree again simple right no bad words no nothing but is this a curse and that is what happens when you and i say to ourselves i'm not good at this yaar i cannot do that you go you go you go hallelujah can you imagine i'm a person who doesn't like mic doesn't like photos doesn't like video i love to be by myself that was the old me but the new me has myself crucified there was a time where every word somebody said or even if you gave me a look i'll be thinking oh my god what is that person thinking about me what they must be saying about me maybe i should not approach that person maybe i should not keep friendship with that person maybe i should not talk maybe i should just go and sit somewhere else anybody like me hallelujah but now when i'm carrying the sweet fragrance of christ what am i doing not only is my life filled with fragrance whatever i have received i'm going and passing it on to others hallelujah hallelujah discernible both among those who are being saved and among those who are being who are perishing hallelujah thank you jesus now how many of all raise your hands okay how many of you all have a spirit raise your hands let let heaven see camera is not seeing good and how many say i am a spirit good and how many don't say anything first you finish your teaching then i'll give you the answer hallelujah let's settle this once and for all because this changed my life this changed the way i look at myself this changed the way i look at other people this changed the way i pray this changed the way i speak because i have not understood who i am i act like an ordinary human being have you heard i'm only human it's common it's human nature it happens are we are emotional beings yaar it happens sometimes right or wrong wrong emotions are meant for you to connect with each other and with god when you're here on earth but they are not supposed to control you let's go to 1 thessalonians 5 23 one thessalonians 5 23 Don't show the scripture just wait. Um yes brother. Man is divided into how many parts? Which are they? Okay. Yes sister. Two parts. Okay. Okay. Yes. He's given you the answer. Come on tell me also now. No, no, not you. Him, him. Ah, soul and spirit. Very good. Yes, brother? You, brother? Which are they? Body, mind and soul. Okay. Sister? Body. Okay. Can you please write down and remember it good for the rest of your lives some of you will set correct but the order was all off okay 
body, mind, emotion and spirit. No. According to the Bible, man is a tripart being. So you are divided into three parts. The spirit is first. Then the soul. And then the body. Don't forget that. Did you get it? Good. What do you mean by body? Correct. The outer body, what you can see. A simple example to understand. When Jesus had to come for the plan of salvation, did he come in a human body? Correct? To the womb of Mother Mary? Yes? So it's sorted. How about the devil? So, pause, listen carefully to what I am saying and think, okay? Ready? The devil doesn't have a body. On this planet Earth, in order to get any work done, I need a body. Now, the devil doesn't have a body, so he's looking for which person's mind is strayed away not on God's word and now I can use that person to do my dirty work. So who are you an agent of? The kingdom of God or the devil? Because he's employing. Did I give you all a bad news? You'll become very serious. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, the devil doesn't even have a body. So who has the upper hand? He or us? Are you understanding? Even to do one thing, like to get him into some irritation, he has to first get my permission. Correct? If I'm standing in the line for food and now suddenly this brother comes and cuts in, I look at him. Like that. What we'll do? Show him the line, right? Yeah. Why? Because the devil gave a thought. How come this guy just comes in the middle? What he thinks of himself? There's a line. He has to follow the line, no? Just because you're in India doesn't mean anywhere where you stand starts the line. Did you understand? Keep this in mind. You have a finance problem. You have a marriage problem. You have no peace. You're not sleeping at night. You have diabetes. You have pressure. You have whatever problem. A, B, C, D problem. All the different kinds of problem. Who has the upper hand? That problem or you? Huh. But do you act like it? Or do you act like the devil has all the control? And like we just heard, the devil gives the thoughts. The devil gives the thoughts. We always want to blame the devil. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you understand how power-packed you are? Okay. Let's go to Ephesians 1.3. Okay. Now, what do you understand by soul? Yes, sister. What do you understand by soul? Soul is soul. Whatever you understand, there's no right, no wrong. We learn. Okay. Yes, brother. Thoughts, brother. Yes, you. The br yes, you. Very good. Okay. Sister in orange. Okay. Brother. Okay. 
sister? That's the process. Good. Okay. Yes, sister? Soul? Very good. Okay. Write down. Soul includes my mind. The mind. Soul includes my mind. My five senses, what I see, what I hear, what I smell, what I taste, what I touch. My intelligence, my emotions, and my choices. Did you all get it? See, okay? Pay attention to everything that's being thought because before closing, I'll ask a question. Whoever doesn't answer doesn't get food. No, no. So you learn. I give spiritual food, then physical food. Hallelujah. Good deal? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. Let's take an example of soul. Say, for example, somebody went to the doctor's place. The doctor gave them a report saying that you have a very sick, serious illness and within six months you will die. The doctor spoke one time, right? Now the person is going home, say they are in the bus or the car or whatever. Now, who's talking to the person? Huh? Shh, don't answer. Who's talking to the person? And then what happens to the person? So look in your notes. The intelligence starts telling what will happen to my children? What will happen to my husband? What will happen to my wife? What will happen to my future? I am only so young. Correct? Emotions are like, I cannot die now. Lord, I don't want to go now. Choices are, what, what can I do now? How can I extend my life? Correct? Is the soul now very troubled? Understanding? When COVID came and you got a positive report, now what happened to you? The symptoms which were not there also started appearing. Correct? Correct or no? Hallelujah. Now you all are sitting here. The breeze is blowing. What is the soul telling you? What is the mind telling you? What breeze man feeling so sleepy now? And this girl, she's just asking anybody questions. Can't sleep also. Can't wink an eye also like that. Correct? Is the soul talking? Is the mind talking? Have you ever seen your hand leave, go for a walk and come back? Huh? Have you seen your leg one day it says, oh, I want to go to the garden. Let me go to the garden. And it leaves your body and goes. So what does this mean? My mind makes a decision which signals the brain. And the brain then tells the body, this is what has to be done next. So every day, do I have to renew my mind? Because the mind is exposed by what I can see. On the internet, I can see all those dirty scenes. I can see all that. It's, it's, it's very joyful in my heart. I'm feeling very good. It's giving me pleasure. But do you know what you're doing is wrong? The alcohol tastes very good. I can see pink elephants after I drink. That's what I'm told. I don't know, OK? The way you are looking at me. Hallelujah. 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 
everything speaks to us at all times. Now, if I keep on looking at her, after some time, what will happen to her? Will her soul start talking to her? Like, why is she looking at me? Why did she choose only me? There are so many other people. Now, what she'll make me do, correct? In the same way, the devil is looking for whose mind doesn't have God's word, is not on God's word, and he wants to use that person to do his dirty work. Hallelujah. Anytime you'll have felt restless, no peace. You'll have a very peaceful person, people. Pieces or peace? Not P I E C E S. P E A C E. How many of you are peaceful? How many of you are in pieces? P I E C E S. How many of you are sleeping? Hallelujah. I'll show you a scripture which became flesh. When I say flesh, remember in the beginning of the class I said hearing and hearing. Okay? Okay. We'll come back to this, okay? Brother, can we go to Isaiah 26 verse 3? Isaiah 26 verse 3. It so happened during COVID, most of the countries you were not allowed to travel, right? Everything was closed. So I suddenly got some not so good news from my home country. And at that time, I had to go to Bible study, which was on Zoom. Now my mind got so troubled within a matter of minutes or seconds, I can say, that I started debating whether I should go to class or no. My justification was, my soul mind is telling me, if you go to class, and if they try to call again, you'll miss the call. You'll miss what's happening over there. You'll not know whether the situation became better or worse. You'll not be able to comfort them. You'll not be able to talk. Everything was going on. But the spirit mind was telling me, go to class. When you don't look at your problem, but you stretch out and go to see others' problem, the Lord will take care of your problem. Do I have a choice? Didn't we just write now? Soul means choice. So I made a choice to go to class. I made a choice to go to class. The class went on, the preaching finished, the tongue session happened, everything happened. As soon as I finished the class, and God is my witness, because in those days I was staying alone because my two roommates who were supposed to come couldn't enter the country. So I was literally alone in that flat for five months with no human contact. Is it easy? I had fever. I had so many other things that happened to me. But the Holy Spirit was always with me in those days. And when I came out of class, I got a call saying that everything at home has resolved because I kept my mind on this scripture and I kept speaking it and speaking in tongues. And I said, Lord, you said, if my mind is on you, if my mind is stayed on you, if my mind is stayed on you, my mind wants to stray, but I'm making a choice to keep my mind on you, to keep my mind on you, you have promised perfect peace. And that's exactly what I saw when I got the call again. They said everything is resolved. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You keep in perfect peace whose, whose, whose. So where is the battle every day? Is the devil the problem? Is God the problem? Who is the problem? Me. Because I have a choice whether to listen to the voice of the devil or to listen to the voice of God's word. But what do I do? The devil is using my loved one. The devil is doing this. The devil is doing that. Stop blaming the devil and start acting like responsible Christians. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Have you ever seen when somebody wants to go washroom or they want to go, they always want company, no? Haven't you all seen? Even when you will come from the dormitory or when you will come from anywhere, you will always find twos walking. Because that is human nature. I always want to tag along. I always want somebody to be with, with me. So if you have done something wrong, can blame both. It's a beautiful journey when you start walking with the Holy Spirit. You will start becoming a mature Christian. You'll stop blaming the devil. You'll stop blaming people. You'll stop blaming everybody. And when the situations come, when the circumstances come, your first thing will be like, okay, Lord, what am I learning here? What are you teaching me here? What do I need to correct? What do I need to renew? Because something in the mind is corrupted. That's why these things are going on. So what do I need to do to get back into that peace? What happened to the Israelites? God said, I made a land flowing with milk and honey. Correct? Was it already spoken that the land is flowing? What they had to do? Go and take it. But their great minds, what did their great minds think? You don't know? Yes, brother? Uh, go to Numbers 13. I think it's 13 onwards. What did their great minds think? And we are just like the Israelites. Our promised land is very close at hand. But how many years we are in the wilderness? Go down. Come to that place where they say, we be as grasshoppers. Okay. And there, we, 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 what is one of the gateway? You wrote in your notes from the soul, the five senses, right? So what did they do? They, the moment they saw, did it start talking to them? Every day do you see your loved ones? Do you still see they are on the wrong path? Do you see that they are still arguing with you? Do you see your finances in the negative? Do you see your business falling? Do you see that you are not yet having a life partner? Or the partner that you married also, now you're asking God, why did you give this one? Hallelujah. The gateways, what am I allowing myself to see, to hear? How many of us sit in front of the TV, television, television? You'll all sit with the Bible at home. Nobody watches TV. Thank you, brother. One, two honest, three honest. A mobile phone. How many sit with the mobile and watch the news on the mobile? Because yesterday where I went, they told me, Sister, we don't see television anymore. Everything is available on the mobile. And I was like, yeah, that's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So how many of you are watching, what is that? Talent show, news channel on the mobile. Everybody forgets other bile, but nobody will forget mobile. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isn't mobile become so important that sometimes you will see the lady has forgotten the purse at home, but her mobile is in her hand? Maybe I'm talking to the wrong group. They're looking at me like as if I spoke something wrong. Okay, can you read that? 13, 33 together. In school, I used to read like this. Huh? Come on, read together in one accord. Okay. 
okay pay attention to this ha huh? and we were is it their own mind talking to them did anybody tell them did they come up with the conclusion themselves <coughs> those 10 did they mess up the future of all the israelites <coughs> read it again and so we were i'm thinking they wouldn't have even seen them correct because they went to spy whether the land is good or no right or wrong yes or no yes. if they had to see them do you think they would have left them there's no mention just my imagination the fact that they came back to give a report which means those giants would not have even seen them correct but see so we were in their sights how many times in our own lives we've said maybe this person doesn't like me maybe this person doesn't respect me maybe this person hates me maybe she is deliberately doing this and in that other person's mind there is nothing about you so does our mind talk to us correct <coughs> understand one thing understand one thing the devil will give you thoughts and imaginations contradicting to god's word in the third person to make you believe that this is your thoughts example i used to always think that nobody loved me nobody cared about me uh, i wasn't looking good enough i wasn't whatever good at i didn't like math so i thought my teacher hated me but actually speaking when i look back now i realize i've never really spoken to her all that thinking was just in my mind and i developed such a hatred for maths because of my own thinking maybe if i had to approach her things would have been different doesn't it happen in relationships correct and god had told them y'all go to the land i have prepared if you read the full further on it says that caleb and joshua said those giants are meat for us that means they the israelites would be able to defeat the giants how many of us missed out on our blessings because we had our own mind talking to us i'm not good at business i'm not good at this i don't look good i'm too fat or i'm too thin or i'm too short for the longest time i felt so sad i was so short can you see me standing on the stage still everybody comes down i also wish to come down but if i come down your height my height will be the same height but let me tell you this height helped me when i was going on my mission to chatisgarh because we had eight of us on four reserve tickets so two of us had to sit on the upper berth for nearly 12 hours with a tall person sitting can you ma manage in that place but with this size can you manage so at that day i said thank you lord i said jaise bhi banaya ekdam mast banaya hallelujah hallelujah it all depends on how you process things in your mind as long as you keep your mind stayed on god's word you'll be prospering but the moment you keep your mind stayed on what you're feeling 
what you are seeing, what you are hearing, that's it. The devil will have a good field day in your mind. I was a person who used to be in depression, okay? So I could sleep for 17, 18, 19 hours nonstop. Because for me, it just took one thought to get everything going spiraling downward. Just one thought. And in order not to think, because I reached a stage where I could just pull or just bang glass and break glass. I reached that stage. So I would go to sleep. When you sleep, you're sleeping. You're not doing any more trouble. But is it healthy? When you wake up, the trouble is still there, right? It's not yet dealt with, right? Right or wrong? Many of us think, if I keep quiet, if I keep the problem inside, it will go away. Or have you heard the, <coughs> have you heard time heals? Huh? That's the biggest lie. Time doesn't heal. If time would heal, I don't need Jesus. <coughs> when my father passed away, they told me time would heal. Nothing healed. Everything became worse. But when I learned... See, brother, I'm not speaking for anybody. I got delivered from both those things. I'll tell you how. General. I'll tell you how it helped me. Because even I was a person, when my father died, my life stopped. You know, life is like a train. You all have all been on trains, right? It stops at every station. People get out. People get in. But does the train stop? It goes on. In the same way, my life is a train. The captain is Jesus. In school, friends got in. When their time was finished, they got out. College friends got in. College friends got out. University friends came in. University friends went out. Work friends came in. First company, work friends went out. Second company, second one. Only your spouse will be the one who will journey with you till the end. But your train should not stop for anybody because you're not here to do anybody's mission except Christ. If it stops, you're absolutely a person not in the kingdom of God. My train stopped for five years when my father passed away because I didn't know the truth. But the day I understood the truth that Jesus is my captain, he is the ambassador, I am the ambassador of his kingdom representing him here on earth and secondly, I know and I know my father accepted Jesus as his Lord, God, and Savior. It is just one door. You know, like a room door. You open the door, you're inside the room. You open the door, you're outside the room. It's just one door difference between earth and heaven. And my father, I know and I know and I know, 100% is right now with Jesus, enjoying with Jesus. And I don't have to worry. That is because I didn't have the truths. When my father passed, it was very sudden. The same incident happened with me 22, 2022. I was on a mission in Chhattisgarh. My father passed away 10 days before my birthday. Okay? I got the news. My sister calls me. She wishes me. And then she says, I have a not so good news. So I said, okay, tell me. She says, uncle passed away on my birthday. My dad passes 10 days before. My uncle passes on my birthday. How? The same manner my father passed away. Heart attack in the same area, airport area. Now, I was in a place, even if I tried my best, I cannot reach for the funeral because they did not want to delay it because it would be All Souls and Saints Day. So I had to first get to a place where there is an airport. 
and then fly back. So in that moment, I sat and I said, Lord, what do I do? Because he's my dad's brother. I've known him all my life. So he's like a father. You know what came to my mind? When John the Baptist was murdered, Jesus went apart and he wanted to grieve. But when he saw the crowd, his heart was filled with compassion. He forgot his own grief and he went out there and preached and there was amazing healings that happened. And I said, Lord, if you do that, Ephesians 5 1 says, I am supposed to imitate Christ. So in this moment, I'm going to imitate you. It's very hard because my mom is there. My mom's mind will keep playing. How come this happened? How it happened suddenly? How this happened? How that happened? So my mind was also working. But again and again and again and again and again and again, on that mission, I had to renew my mind that, Lord, when I am doing your work, you are taking care of my people back home and nothing happens to them. And I am telling you, that day in that church, the signs wonders, miracles that we saw were amazing, which I didn't see in my whole trip over there. Hallelujah. It's all about what am I willing to choose? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Many people told me time will heal. No. The day I started planting God's word in my heart and I started making it a deliberate decision. Example, do you all brush your teeth? How many brush your teeth? Do you nobody brushes? Why you all didn't put your hand up? Everybody brushes their teeth, right? Thank God. Because I came from a place where they don't brush their teeth throughout the year. We went on a mission where they don't brush their teeth, they don't have bath also. So I was wondering if you all came from there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, in order to brush your teeth, does your mommy call you to remind you? How about you, sister? Brother, mommy is reminding you? Huh? Every night she calls you in the dormitory. Did you brush your teeth? Why? Ah, it's a, it's a. So, when you were small, did she have to remind you? But as you keep doing it every day, now even in your sleep you can get up and know that, oh, the first thing I have to do is brush my teeth. In the same way, I had worldly habits. Now I need to replace them with godly habits. Write down. My words, my words determine my thoughts My words determine my thoughts. My thoughts determine my emotions and feelings. My emotions and feelings Determine my decision. Decision. My decision determines my choice. My choice. Determines my choice.
my choice my choice or choices my choices determine my habits my habits determine my character my character determines my destiny so what is the root what is the root exactly what is the root if you don't like what is happening in your life at the moment go backward check your destiny check what is the character check what are the habits are you understanding what are you doing every day write in big capital bold letters what i do every day will determine my future what i do every day will determine my future brother can you put romans 12:2 are you getting a better understanding of the soul and how important the renewing of the mind is we have still not come to spirit but we'll come there sorry what i do every day determines my destiny if i spend my time watching for example in covid season all i did was watched about covid what was happening to me the best of businessmen people who had lot of money ended up committing suicide why not because covid hit them it was fear are you understanding so the more i spend my time in the word of god the more i'll be flourishing hallelujah let me give you the testimony of this 91 year old uncle which i heard okay he was on the bed and he couldn't walk and they told him you'll not be able to walk it will be this way for you for the rest of your life now this uncle heard the teachings and there is a scripture psalms 92 verse 14 which says i will be fresh and green full of sap all the days of my life he only heard it correct now what does the soul say i have choices to make so he made a choice if this word is true i'm going to do it so he stopped talking much to the family members he stopped talking much to outsiders he would be very careful with his words and he kept saying the scripture for 6 months continuously and nobody could understand why it, what happened to him why he became so quiet but there was a day when he got up and started walking and he walked and walked and walked and he came to such a state where he would use the public transport go to the marketplace he would do all his work by himself why because he made a choice that he did not want to live the low life but he now wanted to live the life which god has called simply by speaking words and making imaginations you and i have the same choice what is your choice ask your neighbor you're not asking your neighbor you have only one neighbor brother no neighbor No neighbor there see neighbor sitting there alone Hallelujah okay let's read this now Come down to 121 
I beseech you therefore brethren can we read together I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that you present your candles garland prayers what it saying ask your neighbor do you have a body they are confused now first she says ask them if you have a spirit now if you are a spirit now she's talking about body are body is the one which you have no correct how you came here flying like a spirit body no your body is come here right so do you have a living body or a dead body ah you have living body i'll ask you questions so think twice i'm giving you a chance do you have a living body or a dead body how many have a living body put your hands up what is this what is this sister so she don't ask me questions let me ask you a question if you are really a living body okay how many of you during the breaks or whatever time you have with each other for fellowship you are all new to each other right in the dormitory and all asked one another if there is a situation come on today what we have studied let's apply it or we just got happy because she's from my hometown come let's share the bed together side by side we can speak the local language when you see somebody sitting alone you did it praise god that's wonderful that is called a living body who's always looking to go and reach out to somebody what's a dead body who comes every sunday for mass goes home and ah, now they are going on saturday <laughs> hallelujah <laughs> hallelujah between you and god okay don't put your hands up how many of you make it your choice to be a living body when you leave from the retreat you tell the lord in this moment practical or not i beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of god that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto god which is your reasonable service then and be not con formed can you see the word formed it has a form right now how many people here cook have baked a cake or cooked idlis or sanna nobody okay oh, the others at least know right what it what it's like to bake okay now who is the one who put the hand up here tell me earlier okay who put your hand up here okay you bake cakes okay very good so now supposing you want a round cake now you put it in the oven and then you suddenly hear the cake is screaming it's hot it's hot take me out huh you don't hear it screaming are you sure you bake cakes who else bakes cakes now they'll not put their hand up only Huh? Old machine. Ah. Do you, do you hear the cake screaming? There is high heat pressure. Is it screaming? And he's put it in a round mold. Because of the pressure it comes out square. You say you don't come to my bakery. you'll spoil everything hallelujah what about us christians when there is little pressure from here little pressure from here 
What happens? Huh? Possible? But on the face, praise the Lord. But in the heart? Are you understanding? Do we change under pressure? Under extreme heat? When somebody is giving us too much heat, especially in marriages? How is a diamond formed? Through heat and pressure, no? Ladies, you like diamonds? Now they'll not say yes also. So if I say yes, she'll ask me something. Sister, you like diamonds? She says, no. <laughs> you really don't like diamonds? Sister, you like diamonds? You'll see, she says, I like pearls. What about you, sister? You like diamonds? Very different group. Nobody likes diamonds. Sister, you like? You like? You like diamonds, right? How does diamond come out? How are diamonds produced? When they go through a lot of heat and pressure, right? Correct? How, how is a Christian made a Christian? When you go through? Ah, that's why Jesus said, in this world, you will have trials and temptations and tribulations. When you have those, run to the priest. Run to the intercession group. Or go lock yourself up in the room. What did it say? Be of good cheer. But how many of us come with a long face when something is wrong and say, what? You know what's the most dangerous question in a Christian life? Yes, yeah, somebody said it. Say it loudly. Sometimes I make that mistake. I'll ask, how are you? And then they start, and then I'll be like, ayo, why? Why did I ask? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ask your neighbor, does your form change under pressure, heat? What's your neighbor saying? No? Okay, how many of you all use col uh, Colgate toothpaste? Others, what you'll use? Salt water? <laughs> All of you'll use Colgate, right? Okay. Now, when you press the end of the Colgate, what comes out? Paste. Middle of the Colgate? Paste. Front? When they press you, what comes out? Don't say paste. When they press you, what comes out? Ah, God bless you. Oh, I'll see you later. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And be not conformed to this. To this. What separates the world and the word is just one lie from the devil. The moment you believe a lie, you're according to this world. Like sometimes people feel shy to come here, no, to give testimony. You know why? Because the devil has given you a lie. If you go and speak there, no, and if you make a mistake, they'll all laugh at you. And then you'll come on camera, no, and then your hair is not in place. That, that lipstick you didn't put properly and come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <coughs> but, but, be you, can you see the word form again? Transform, what is the meaning of transformation? Something more? Huh? Very good, something more. Have you seen caterpillar? Correct? What does the caterpillar do? Eats leaves. Does it look good? Just like a small worm, right? Does it look good, right? Correct? But as it keeps eating that leaves, what happens? It turns into a beautiful butterfly. Can you see the original form anymore? And that is the meaning of transform. Where I cannot see my original form anymore because now I'm a whole new creation 
in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. So moment by moment, do you see yourself, old self, or do you see your new self? Sure? Sure? Praise God. But you may be transformed by how? And this is Sunday to Sunday, no? Only when you come for the retreat. Every day, I would say, brother, every moment. That's why the Bible says, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the desires of the flesh. You know why? I could be preaching here. I'll give you an example. I could be preaching here. Maybe I went down and somebody just said something to irritate me. Did it take long? Did it take long for me to get into offense? So is it a moment by moment? Yes or no? So is it only in the morning when you're saying your prayers? Or do you have to continually walk in the spirit? And that's what we are coming to. What's in your spirit? That's the last part. What's in your spirit? Yes, brother? What's in your spirit? We finish with body. We finish with soul. Now what's in the spirit? Yes, brother, you with the check shirt in front. What's in the spirit? What did he say? God. Okay. Yes, brother, you? Word of God. Who put it there? You don't know. Holy Spirit put it there. Sister, what's in your spirit? Jesus. Brother? Word of God. Who put it there? Am I confusing you? What's in your spirit, sister? She doesn't give a chance to rest, no? <laughs> Hallelujah. Write down, in my spirit is the faith sense. Faith sense. Have you heard people saying, you know, my sixth sense told me, or my inner something told me? It's the faith sense. Faith Faith sense. In the soul you have the five senses, right? So in your spirit is the sixth one which is called the faith sense. Can you go to John 4, 24? F-A-I-T-H-S-E-N-S-E. -S -E. Okay? Did everybody get that? Now here's the nice part. Come on, let's read together. God is a? God is a? According to Genesis 1.26, man is made in the image and likeness of? So who is man? Agreed? Anybody disagrees? Good. God is a spirit and they that and they that must how must we worship him? But how many of us like to cry? And then we feel good. And then we go. And then we forget. And then somebody comes and says, what to tell you, man, that problem? Is it possible? Morning you've prayed about something. You surrendered it to the Lord. And that's what you think you've done. And by 12 o'clock in the afternoon, nothing has happened. And now you're speaking about the problem again. So did you really worship God in spirit and truths? 
What does it mean, worshipping God in spirit and truths? It simply means, I take God's word. Truth means God's word. And I speak it back to him as it is. I tell him how much he loves me. I remind myself of what he's done for me. What is the meaning of worshipping? Praising? Okay. Is it easy to worship when the going is good or going is not so good? How many say not so good? I can worship the Lord. Put your hands up. When nothing is going good, how many of you can worship the Lord? Easily. It's hard, no? They tell you to put praise and worship and start dancing. Crack people, no? What did Abraham do when he was asked to offer Isaac for three days? What did Abraham do? He worshipped. And that is what you and I have to do if we are really walking in the spirit. My time is up. But there are a lot of teachings on spirit, soul and body on the channel. I encourage you to please go study over and over and over. Your prayer life will change. The way you look at yourself will change. The way you look at other people will change. The way you look at problems will change. You will be able to start seeing things from the spirit. I did not even touch efficient still. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So who would like to come, brother, with a check shirt? Can you come to say the closing Thanksgiving prayer? Yes. Uh, can you speak a little louder or somebody tell me what's the question? The soul is the mind, the intelligence, emotions, choices, and your five senses. Body is separate. Body is separate. Yeah. Body is the third part. Mm. The mind is a part of soul. It's a part of the soul. Remember the, the parable in the Bible where the rich man and the poor man died? <coughs> right? And what happened? He saw what all bad he did and he said, can you send somebody down so that my brothers don't do the same thing? <coughs> I can explain you later, brother. Is that okay? I can explain to you later, because now we have to break. Is that okay? Okay. Brother, what happened to him? <coughs> you have to take perm permission from mommy? Ah, not his mom. See? No, you come. Even if you say, thank you, Jesus, for what we have learned today, that's it. Let that spirit of shyness die today. <coughs> now, this was soul mind or spirit mind? First, soul mind. Now? Um, thank you, Jesus, for um, this retreat and for what we've learned um, and for your word has blessed us. Um, and we are, we are so grateful and blessed to be, um, to receive the word from uh, all the preachers. And um, we pray uh, that the Holy Spirit helps us to implement everything that we've learned in our life um, and seek your kingdom. And we give you praise and thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise God. Wasn't that good? Wasn't that good? Wasn't that good? Brother, what's your name? Romel. Thank you, Jesus. So 